Well, welcome back to the weekly discussion. It feels like we haven't been here in a while. Beyond Sunday. Beyond yeah. Sunday. Here we are. <laughs> here we are. We got Bishop. Bishop in the house. Back. Welcome back, Bishop. It's, yeah, it's been a while, man. Be yeah, it's so good to have you. So good. Yes. You you had the uh, you had Sunday this past this week, and uh, why don't you just give us a brief recap of Sunday's sermon, man? Oh man. Well, Sunday message came as a result of you know praying with Pastor Adam. Yep. But before I speak, I want to let everybody know what a joy it is to serve with you guys. Mm-hmm. You know. We serve in this house with one passion, and, and it's very rare that you find people that you can absolutely walk with in love and unity and mutual respect for each other. Mm-hmm. My heart is to serve in the house of the Lord. I have no yeah. other agenda but to be a part of journey as, as you go to the nations, but you go to the nations from a house. Yeah. If you are not a part of the church, you shouldn't minister to it. Mm. You have to be part of a body in order to serve the body. That's yeah. good. You cannot be apart from the body and be of any benefit to the body. And yeah. my connection to the body is journey. And I praise the Lord for that, for Pastor Eric and maybe Joe and you and uh, Pastor Joey and Adrian and Pastor Adrian. And um, it's wonderful that we can serve together like this. Yes, yeah. it is. It's so good. Um. We prayed together on a Saturday morning, and yep. um, I know if you remember, a few months ago, I asked the Lord something out of my spirit, not my mind, when I said, teach us the protocol to host you. What would it take for you to be comfortable in our midst? We all talk about entering into God's presence, yep. but we want more than us entering his presence. We want him to be comfortable where we are, Yeah. because a lot of times he come where people are, but he's not comfortable there. He's yeah. not accepted there. Uh-huh. He is not given the stage. He is not made the, the center of attention. Right. And he will not be comfortable to share it with us. He's got to be number one. Yeah. Yeah. In many churches, they they don't say it with their mouth, but they say it with their attitude. I don't mind you coming, but if you come, you're going to want to take off. <laughs> over which is shocking that they would think that way. Mm. <laughs> but in journey, that's what we want. Amen. We yes. want him to come. That's the only agenda. That's the only I've even said to the staff this past week um, on Tuesday in our meeting, um, you know, we've been talking uh, a lot about hosting the presence of God, mm-hmm. talking about being a presence-driven church. That's who we are. That's what yeah, we want to do. It's all about his glory, about his presence. But how do we... Uh, change even little things uh, to um, to welcome to, yeah. uh, to, for the Lord to want to inhabit this place. Like we want this place to be a place of inhabitation of his manifest presence above all else. Yeah. Nothing else matters, right? And that's even how we uh, articulate uh, being presence driven is we're not built around a person or a ministry, but we're built around the presence of God. And that really is our heart as we're learning together how yes. to really do that, Absolutely. how to host him. Yeah, I was in a crusade in Suriname going up. This is a little apart from that. And I preached and we had about maybe about 3,000 people there. Yeah. And uh, I prayed with all the people. When I finished praying, we worship a little, and he told me to tell the people to be silent. And, I, and they were quiet. All of a sudden, the glory came, and they were f- people were falling like thunder. And Come on! To the point where I was afraid to open my eyes to see, <laughs> because when the glory show up, you don't want to do anything that will distract. Right. You see? Yeah. So it put you in a place of a uh, reverence, a fear. Mm. And, and it's wonderful to come to that place. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're willing to respond at any time, any way, whatever he wants, you know. Right. It's like when we were talking about Abraham on Sunday. Abraham was at the door of his tent in the heat of the day, which is a siesta time. Right. But instead of sleeping, he was looking yeah. in anticipation, hungry for something else. And that's that's your heart, Pastor Arab. You talk about hunger. Yeah. Hunger being the prerequisite for the move of God. If you're not hungry for it, he's not going to show up. You yeah. know, If you're not hungry, you wouldn't eat. Yep. While you were talking um, on Sunday, both services... I just felt like this overwhelming feeling of, um, I was just holding back tears <laughs> because I, I'm to the place in my heart is like, 
I have to see what it's like yes. to have a church that where the glory of God just moves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I want it so badly. And I've told you this, I've told Pastor Adrian this, like, um, I'll go to any extent, any length yes. to, to do it. Like, whatever it takes, that's what I want to do. Yes. Right? And so, like, you talking about this, so you, you have the protocol, you had seven different things. Yes, yes. Right? What were the seven things? The you, first is hunger. The second thing is the ability to recognize when you show up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't, be, the Bible says, is, uh, he told it Jerusalem, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often would I have guarded you as a hen gathered chicks, but you didn't recognize the day mm. of your visitation. Yeah. And that's why we don't want to miss it. So we got to be looking in anticipating, expecting. The third thing he did was that he changed perspective. He got up and run to the Lord and the two angels. See, some people say, oh, if God want to give journey revival, then let it come. It would never come. Yeah. It is something we have to pursue. pursue. Right. What do you think about that, Pastor? Pursue. That's funny because I was listening to worship music this morning and a couple of different podcasts and that specific word pursuit, pursuit, God pursues us. Well, in the same manner, he desires for us to pursue him. Yes. yes. And so, like, isn't that the heart of it all? Like, yes. I, I, Pastor and I, and I were talking the same feeling, the same heart, the same burden on Sunday. Yes. And, I, and I would venture to say that we weren't the only ones feeling that like overwhelming yeah. desire just to see God's glory, but like we couldn't quite understand what that was. Yeah. You know? Hard, almost yeah. hard to articulate sometimes. It was. Like, why am I, like I'm feeling this way and there's a tension. It's like for our services the past, man, I'll say a year, mm-hmm. <laughs> there's, this, there's this tension yeah. mm-hmm. in the room of like, there's this hunger in the room to see the glory of God, to see his presence, to see an outpouring, to see miracle signs and wonders. And there's this tension in the room. Yeah. I'm just like, Lord, can this be the day for breakthrough? Yeah, yeah, can yeah, this yeah. be the day where you're yeah. gonna where we're, we're gonna see something just incredible? Like in the old testament where they um, where they were worshiping the Lord and they could no longer play their instruments anymore. Yeah, yeah. They could no longer yeah. do anything, like to where like you were sharing your story where I couldn't look, I didn't want to do anything at all. I don't want to ruin what I God is doing. Pray. Like yeah. Because there's a reverence, there's an awe, there's a, a healthy fear of God. There's just yes, a yes. a hunger to see him move. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's not casual, it's holy. Yeah, you know, and, and the, the, there was really no words to adequately describe the glory of God as what the Shekinah, the Shekinah Kabod, glory, and so. But it, it's 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 so amazing. But you know, when when Abraham saw him, the Bible says he ran and he bowed with his face to the ground. Yeah. Yeah. The element of submission cannot be overemphasized because he's not coming to be equal with you. You remember when he came to Moses, when Moses said, show me your glory. He said, there is a place by me and thou shalt stand upon a rock. He says, and I will be gracious to whom I'll be gracious and so mercy to whom I'll show. In other words, we are never going to be equal. Right. Yeah. There is always have to be the element of absolute submission. You know, demons only respect those who are in submission to God. The the Bible says, submit yourselves therefore unto God, then resist the devil and he shall flee. Mm. If you don't submit to God, demons have no respect for you. You see, because you are out of order. Yeah, right. You see, because you're not going to overcome sin by willpower. No, no. You, you, mu- you <laughs> no, might. You, no it, it might work for a day or two days, yeah. but eventually you're going to fall back in. A barely it's a day. comes from submission. Yeah, yeah. submission to the Lord. Yeah, but you see, it's the element that Satan can resist, because he rebelled and was cast out. Jesus submitted and was exalted. Yeah, yeah. it's 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 the opposite to the to the. To, to the demonic and the world. See, so anytime you you do the opposite to what he does, you can defeat him. He's like, it's like nothing. Yep. I've been places where people were totally demon-possessed. And I say to them, you sit right there and don't move. And when I'm finished, I will deal with you. And they said, don't like a robot without moving. Come don't on, let's go. And when I finish, I said, come and deal with it with like nothing, you know. But that is not the power of shouting or, or nothing. The, what they respect is my submission to Jesus. Right, if good. I am not man enough to run to the altar and bow down and worship oh, at yeah, his feet, I can't stand against no demon. Right. 
Right. You know, so but good. but the closer you get to God, that 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 heart is easy to submit. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, but what I would like us to talk, I would like you to talk, both of you to talk about, is when he made God an offer God couldn't refuse. He didn't say to God, come to my house and heal me. Come to my house and remember you promised me a son for 25 years. He said, come to my house and let me minister to you. Yeah. Let me wash your feet. Let me cook food and give you to eat. God yeah. don't eat, but why did he? <laughs> he couldn't refuse eating because this guy was so, his heart was so much wanting to serve him. Yeah. And I believe anytime he sees that heart of worship where we go, he cannot resist it. What right. do you think about that, Pastor? Um. I was talking to someone recently, and uh, they said this to me: "Like, if you can open doors oh, for yeah, for demons yes. uh, in your life, you yes. can open doors to demonic strongholds in your life. Mm. If you can do that, why can't you open doors for God? For God, yeah. why can't you open doors for <laughs> oh, the angelic host? <laughs> right? I love it, man. And so, it, what do you do to entertain uh, God?" You worship. Worship. It's just that simple. I mean, I even said that uh, in first service afterwards. Um, yes. How do you how do you build a culture of revival? You worship when no one is looking. Yeah. yeah, you worship. So, like one thing that we wanted to start doing here is even with being that way, because we want to entertain. Yeah. We want this place to be an habitation yes. of yeah. the Lord's presence. Is uh, to leave worship music playing in the building and yeah. outside twenty four seven. Yes. And it's just like little things like that. Like, have you ever, like, I know for me, I have a, I have a office area at my house. And what I like to do often is before, when I'm leaving, I purposely leave worship music playing the entire time yeah. because I want <laughs> the glory of God to feel welcome in that yes, place. Yes. Yeah. And when I walk in, there's a sense of, uh, of overwhelming peace because yes. of the worship that's been yes. happening in that room. Right. And, um, so, so for us as individuals, like, how do you structure your life around that? Like, how do you, how, how do you, um, how do you entertain uh, the presence of God? How do you make an offer He can't refuse? Mm -hmm. uh, like what you're saying is through submission and just complete and total worship unto worship, Him. Worship. Like, it's just that love. Like He He loves us so much, and He just wants us to respond back to Him with just giving Him everything and with our love and in, mm -hmm. in response to His love, right? And it's such a beautiful thing. It's, it, if you have a relationship with your wife, have a relationship with a, a spouse, whatever it might be, um, if one person is loving, but the other person is just not talking back, is not yeah. communicating back, is not uh, there's work. not an intimacy there, yeah. uh, it's not going to work. But yeah. it takes two people. And so uh, the Lord is pursuing us. Yes. How are we pursuing him? How are we structuring our lives to do that? What, what areas and what uh, things can we do differently in our lives to welcome the presence of God in our life? Amen. Yeah, I think, uh, too, it goes along with what we desire for not just journey, but we want the corporate encounters that everyone experiences. You could take that on a daily practical sense, yes. you know, yeah. like mm -hmm. we're trying to teach people like the overwhelming feeling is you're not really, it's not emotion. We're not trying to drive emotion, but this is serious stuff. Yes. Like when God comes after you, when he pursues you, there's yeah. nothing else to do, but to like Abraham position your heart to run after him and yes. bow, yes. you know? Yes. And once you experience the peace that comes in that, you want that all the time. So like what Pastor Adam was saying, you know, whether playing worship music in your car or in your house or starting the day with something that keeps you continuously hungry, you know, mm -hmm. um, I, I think that's what most people probably need to do. Um, even as leaders of the house, you got to remind yourself, man, I know something's off. Well, let's get back to the basics. Worship, yes. you know, worship, prayer, spending time it's in his presence. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, I understand that. It is the basic. Yeah. It, there's nothing else. There's nothing can fill that place. Absolutely nothing. There's no substitute yeah. for that. You know, lately I've been praying. I wake up every night to pray. But in, in a lot of the days lately, it's not even to ask for anything. Yeah. Just pray in the spirit and just yeah. worship him. Spend time. Yeah, just spend time. I said, why you try to get up, it's like he say, uh, can you stay a little longer? You know, it's it's it's, it's very nice. Yeah. But the, the thing about it is that here is a man telling God, come, sit under the tree. Yeah. Rest yourself. Did God need rest? 
Let me wash your feet. Was his feet dirty? No. But he couldn't pass up the fellowship. That's what he... He was never comfortable, be, happy being in heaven alone. He would not have come and visit Adam every day, every single day, mm. if he was always comfortable in being in heaven alone. He always want a dwelling place here on the earth. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> you remember the story of Obed-Edom? Remember the, the Ark of the Covenant was in the house of Abinadab for 21 years and nothing happened. Yeah. Obed-Edom had it in his house for three months. I read that story with my kids the other day. Yes, <laughs> three months. Yeah. He had to rearrange his house to accommodate the Ark of God. Yeah. We know that the revival we want in Journey is going to demand a lot. Yeah. We can demand more, uh, more buildings, bigger buildings. Yeah. He's going to demand more money, more people, more everything. But we believe God is going to supply all of that yeah. because it will always be about his glory. Because when yeah. he came in the house of, Ab of uh, Obed-Edom for three months. So much blessing. So much blessing that the yeah. king came. Yeah, David. <laughs> David was so excited. And that's why David was excited because he knew he's having the presence of God. He knew what came along with it was blessing. The presence of God brings blessing. Yes. Right? But you can't chase after the, the thing is, though, with your heart, you can't chase after the blessing. No, no, no. You, just, you just have to use the, the blessing comes with just the presence of God. It really does. Right? And so, but your heart has to be, I just, want the, I just want the Lord, right? Yes. And that's why David danced the way he did. So, uh, unashamed, and yes. so, and of course, he was being judged by uh, Michael, yes, uh, right. Saul's Saul's daughter, yeah. right? And um, and then she became barren forever. Yeah, that was. She, mm. But I, you know, when you put, like I said, when you pursue Him, everything else come. Yeah. I'm not pursuing the healing; I'm pursuing Him. So when the, when Abraham pursued Him and enthroned Him, the first thing he said is, "Where is Sarah, your wife?" <laughs> Abraham yes. did have to say, oh, you remember Sarah? Remember she has a problem, though? He just enthroned him. Yeah. You know that the, the end, of the early part, middle part of last year, I had the problem with my heart. Do you remember that? Yep. Yes. Oh, yeah. And the, the inflection rate had decreased to 29%. So they were considering putting in a pacemaker. Two days before Christmas, we went back and they checked it because I was feeling real bad, and it rose to 39%. So they said, oh, you don't need a pacemaker anymore. I had to see the cardiologist in three months. I went yesterday to the cardiologist. The inflection rate of my heart is now 44%. The same heart that they said half of it was dead. It's now 44%. <laughs> But I am not seeking healing. Yeah. I'm yeah. pursuing him. Yeah. He is able to take care. This heart is for his glory. Right. But you said something, Pastor Adam. Um, when God came and Abraham invited him, he became the center of attention. Yes. Not Abraham. Right. And that's, you know, I feel the presence of God in this place. I'm just, just I don't know. Oh, I'm going to flip this table. I'm excited. Let's go. <laughs> but but that's, that's what I hear right. from you. Yes. Yeah. I hear that everything you say, it come out. Everything you say, that's what comes out. That yeah. whole thing of, of making. See, a lot of churches he go to, but he's not allowed to be the center of attention. Right, yeah. Because yeah. men still want to be seen right. and people still have an agenda and they're trying to make an impression and all right. that's not realizing that real um, the recognition only comes at the feet of Jesus. Well, right. what do you think about that? What do you think about, like you say all the time, we don't only want to, I use your words on Sunday, we don't want to give him the stage, we want to give him the whole house. Yeah. Right. What do you think? What? We're not, we're not just... Uh, we're not just making room for the Holy Spirit. No. We're giving him the entire room. Yes. Right, yes. so we'll say that. Um, so my heart, which really, uh, this struck me probably about six, seven years ago. I was listening to a message, and uh, they're talking about the presence of God and how uh, the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, uh, it was, they gathered around the ark. Yes. Right, which represented the presence of God. They live around and the what's tabernacle. Been, uh, all the houses, all the people, the tabernacle was in the middle. Yep. And 
the most successful time in all of Israel was when the Levites were worshiping around yes. David's mm-hmm. Davidic order, right? Yes. Um, that was the most successful time. But the New Testament, um, in, not New Testament, but the church today yeah. has really uh, been gathering around for decades a, a message, yes. mm-hmm. um, a yeah. person, mm-hmm. um, uh, hey, bless, bless me, make mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. But in the Old Testament, where they gathered around, they gathered around the presence of God, and that was it. There was not one person who got the glory. There was not one person who yes. got any praise. They gathered around because they wanted to, to meet with, with God. They wanted to, yes. to be in his presence. Yes. And so the, my drive has always been, let's get back to the Davidic order. Yes. Let's get back to gathering around the presence of God. And let's just see what happens. Yeah, let's see. Let, let's do something different. Let's just see what happens. Yes. Let's try to do something a little bit differently yes, and yes. gather around the presence of God rather than all these strategies of let's go in... Um, uh, let's let's evangelize. Uh, our evangelism comes has to come from a place. And that's why we articulate it this way. It has to come from a place of meeting with the Lord and um, in easy. relationship with Him. Because yeah. it is so much easier. It's not this struggle. And that's why we say with evangelism, we want to take God encounters and we give them away freely. We've received now freely we give. And so as we do that, even uh, I was talking. With Pastor Joey, uh, on Sunday, sent me an email uh, when I was walking through the foyer, and the Lord just kind of sp- spoke to me uh, on it. Uh, our, our invite cards, we have invite cards for church, right? Uh, invite someone to church with you. And uh, I, I like that. It's a, it's a saying that a lot of churches do. I'm not trying to bash or anything like that, mm-hmm. but I just felt like in the moment God was saying, man, let's just tell, not, let's not invite people to church. Let's tell people about Jesus. Mm-hmm. You know, so like we're changing the sign out there <laughs> instead of invite someone to church with you, which is what it says right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're changing it to tell someone about Jesus this yeah. week, yes. right? Because yeah. the goal is not to grow uh, our kingdom. The goal, is, the goal is to grow his kingdom yes. above everything else. And so it comes from a place and a heart of, I just want him to be pleased. Mm-hmm. Yes. everything else right Amen. so if we can if we can create again if we can create a a, a ministry a church that is 100 percent all the way his yeah not ours where he just feels comfortable comfortable <laughs> i could where he's entertained you gotta wait for sunday morning to show so, up you know, and, and that's the thing like how can on sundays our service is not for for people, it's not for man. It, the services are for the. Our services of the people are, in the body of Christ don't know that. Our yeah. services are for the it's Holy for Spirit. Mm-hmm. It's, our services are for the Holy Spirit. Does He feel welcome? Uh, the question I have to ask myself, and I have to guard my heart sometimes, and uh, as I even walk into this next season, of you know, I, uh, one question I've asked Laura in the past um, is, "What do you think about today? Uh, was this good? Was this good? Was yeah, this good?" Yeah. My question doesn't need to be, Laura, what do you think? My question needs to be, Laura, what do you think how the Holy Spirit felt in this moment? Mm-hmm. Was, was he pleased? Mm-hmm. Not were you pleased, Laura. <laughs> yes, yes. My, my, goal, my heart doesn't need to be pleasing Adrian or yeah. pleasing anyone, pleasing you or pleasing mm-hmm. anyone yeah, at all. Yeah, yeah. The heart has to be, uh, was, was the Holy Spirit pleased? Right? Was, uh, was his presence stewarded well in these moments? Yes. Did we move too fast? Because we're going to make mistakes along the way. Sometimes I think that's the one thing that yeah. we've been scared of uh, often is not having control, right? Mm-hmm. We want to have control of services. We, uh, yeah, yeah. What does it look like when the Holy Spirit takes over? Uh, well, it's going to get messy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we have, to, we have to be okay with messy sometimes, yes. right? Um, Sometimes the service will run a little longer, and that's okay, you right? You repent sometimes for certain things. And sometimes we, we might, yeah, you're right, we might quench the spirit at times, mm-hmm. but that never would be my heart. And, but there might be times where I do do that. But immediately I want the Holy Spirit to convict me, and I always be like, okay, Lord, I'm so sorry. Uh, help me in this. Help, help me to learn from this. And we just want to entertain the, the glory I, of God. I had to repent just before Pastor um, Adrian respond. I was in Guyana this last time. Yeah. At love and faith, mm-hmm. and um, they have still some protocol from the government with the with the pandemic situation. Yep. And when I finished, I had a special service for women, and it was real amazing. And the Lord said, "Stand at the end of the stage, put your hands like this, 
And those people who want to be delivered, let them come and put their hand in yours. Because I'm going to put my hand in you. Mm. I said, oh, but you know, they have this protocol thing. And mm. it, it would, and I didn't do it. People still got delivered. But I'm sure that there are many who didn't receive their deliverance because I didn't obey. So I had to repent about that. But when you pursuing God, you have to be prepared for that. Yeah. That if I miss it, I must be willing to just submit. It's hard because sometimes he'll ask you to do things that don't make sense yeah. in the natural. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like well, why would he asked me, did he do that? Why are you asking me to do something do so yeah. different and so yeah. against right. what people might think we should be doing? Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Why there's going to be moments that like situation? that. Why? And it's hard as a leader to distinguish, okay, yes. I've, I've got to do this anyways, right? I have to obey. I and it's hard for anyone. I don't care who you are. Like when you're walking, your Lord tells you to do something, share something. Go ahead. What do you think it would look like, Pastor Adrian? Uh, making him the real center of attention. Man, I, I think, well, at least from, you know, Adam and I and Joey, we talk about this all the time. Um, it's a real personal responsibility to do that, especially leaders of this household. Like we want to teach the church body how to encounter him and, and how he, to make him consumed in our life. But what does that look like to us? Well, you getting up in the middle of the night um, that's not specifically how I uh, yeah, yeah. encounter him well. I was just talking to Pastor Corey, but it's just keeping him at the, the center of our attention in everything we do. Yes. Like I've been really convicted here lately, um, going through a season of, of busyness to do the things that keep me primed well. What I mean by that is, what are the things that I know that I'm completely in tune? Like God, I'm like in that state of submission all the time, not in the state of I got control, you know? Yeah. I have to do these things to not only guard my heart, but to stay intimate with him. Um, and so when you come to the realization that, <laughs> and, and this was the feeling Sunday, man, this responsibility is heavy, not just for the church, but for my family, for our businesses, for people in general, supernaturally, it's, it's gonna take a move of God for us to accomplish these things, right? Oh, yeah. So there's only, one, there's only one way. If we're gonna do it right, if we're gonna do it for him, we gotta do it with him. Yeah, yeah. So for me personally, it's always in this plate of like even responding in this answer, God, how do I respond in a way that pleases you? Yeah. You know, and, and some people might think that's super spiritual, but it, it is, it's facts, yeah. you know? I, I don't want anything to come out of my mouth that I haven't given over to him. I don't wanna do anything or make a decision. Um, you know, we talk about God ideas, like was this truly a good idea or do we seek the Lord first? Yes. You know, so it's it's coming to a place where him first, him always, um, and then just moving in confidence, knowing that he's heard us, one. Yes. He honors what you know our heart submission, and then we can act in that. So That's just wonderful. doing the things um, that keep us intimately close. So, you know. I want to live in a place, and like you're doing, like I want to live in a place where uh, what's on my heart yeah. and what I'm thinking about is impossible for me. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's only, it's only by invitation of the glory of God. 100%. And, uh, and Him working it out that, like, dream big, right? Dream big with your life. Like, yeah, yes, you yes. talked about at the end, uh, second service, you might have done it first service too, about uh, people's destiny. Walk in your yeah. destiny. Like, walk yeah, in your destiny. Important. When you understand your destiny, it's way beyond what you could ever possibly yes, yes, do. And so is. we can't operate our own abilities, our own mights, our own powers, our own giftings, uh, any of that stuff. We have to operate from a place of just. You know, when you walk in your destiny, that which is difficult becomes easy. Yeah. Because yeah. it's, I, I'm doing, this is my purpose on being on earth. Yeah. The, the seventh thing that Abraham did was that when he prepared the food, he brought it before the Lord and the two angels, and he didn't sit at the table with them. He stood by. He became the servant. Yes. He wasn't sitting and his servant serving him. He became, so he who was master became servant to the real master in the presence of his servants. That's good. See, so what did they see? They see the one who is their master serving this one who is here. Yeah. And they it make them honor the guest, which is the Lord. Yes. They reverence him. And people will see that from us. Yeah. When they see me, I go to the nations, I preach, I, I make it a duty to worship. 
See, in a lot of places I go, they would have the pastors in a green room and then they bring you out just before you preach. <laughs> That's not for me. Yeah. I have to be in the worship. Yes. Because I am a worshiper. Right. See, the difference with me and some others is that I am an intercessor and a worshiper who preach. Mm. Right. And that's a preacher good. for us. Yeah, you've told me that many yeah. times. So, so, but imagine Abraham. What else can I bring you? How else can I serve you? He is amazing. He's wonderful now, you know. And I imagine that as soon as the Lord, they finish eating, the Lord said, where is Sarah, your wife? I'm going to deal with the biggest challenge of your life. Yeah. And then what do you think about that, Pastor Adam, how he renewed their body? Mm-hmm. The king of Gira wanted to take away Sarah from Abraham when she was 90 years old. Says, what kind of restoration was that? I love it. Yeah. But that's what God is going to do with us. Yeah. He's going to restore all things. He's going to cause you to walk in what he has for you. Yeah. You see, and... Um, so that they were able to fulfill it. But there's just one more thing I want you to mention. Sure. Was that, you remember when Abraham, when God says, where is Sarah, your wife, and so on. Then the Bible says this, that I believe is where we are. We, the leaders here in the church, in that the Bible says, and Abraham went to bring them on the way. Mm. Imagine Abraham was walking with God and the two angels. What is that like? That that walk, what is what would be our experience as we walking with God in that realm? I mean, that's what it is. It was a realm of illumination and yeah. transformation and, and the glory of, that God turned around and said, shall I hide from Abraham the things that I do? So when you begin a walk, and you will get revelation of things that sometimes you can't even tell people because they wouldn't understand what you're talking about. Yes, what, do you, what do you think about that? Walking in that realm, and I believe that's where we are now. We're in a place where we are walking in a realm that we haven't been there before. Because nobody have no monopoly in this. Right. Nobody can say, well, I know what next. Well, we nobody know what next. Yeah. You know, even when the children of Israel was going to cross over into Jordan, the Lord says they must stay behind the Ark of the Covenant 2,000 cubits. Mm-hmm. For you have not walked this way hitherto forth before. Yeah. So nobody can say, well, go and come back and say, well, you know, you guys got to do this. You got to. No, only God can tell us what next to be done. What do you think about that? I don't want to say other than I just I just want it. <laughs> I, I mean, there, there's 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 certainly like you're saying there's there's a protocol there's a um, there's a sacrifice there's a self discipline to it there's a there's an abiding but it really it just comes from a place of just being so in so in love and so trusting to our heavenly Father and. Yeah, because when right. you do it that way, it's not a work. Right. It's not like we're struggling for right. this thing. In the beginning, though, it, it feels like, to be honest, in the beginning it feels like, man, this is going to be hard, it's going to be difficult, it's going to be a lot of killing of my flesh, my flesh is not going to like this. But once you realize, man, it's so much greater just to dwell with him than it is to, to entertain. And that's the battle between the flesh and the spirit, right? But all um, Abraham was doing at that point is went to bring them on the way. He was walking with them. Yeah, They were not flying and he walking. Right, He was walking with them step by step. And that's what we're talking about. We were at that point where tomorrow we can show up. Next Sunday, can, it's like anytime, anything can happen at this moment. You know, right. something is going on. I can't articulate it. I feel inside like a butterfly is flying around. Yep. There's, there's, there's tension in the air. Let's yeah, go. Let's yeah. break it. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's wonderful. Yeah. It's wonderful to live like that, to live where at, look, if I knew service is going to be this way Sunday morning, it's going to start, it's going to happen, and I why go? Why go? I got to come with a, a coming. It's like anything can happen. And this way we are at this point. Yeah. I believe one Sunday will come and just a big explosion. Yep. When, we, <laughs> when, we as, when we as a body uh, come with, I've said it this way, when we as a body come with an expectation 
uh, to meet with him, like a, yes. uh, a yearning, a, just yes. this, this incredible expectation to meet with him. God is going to respond He's with going. an impartation of his glory. It's going Beyond to happen. what we can imagine. Right. And it won't be like what happened in Brunsville or here or there. Always different. Yes, yes. It's going to be, I believe, beyond, I have to say this, sorry. If, no, you're good. I have a friend by the name of Tommy Coombs. You know, for a long time, we went Bolivia, Peru, and so on together. And um, he told me this last week. He said he was preaching somewhere, and he was walking in the aisle, and the Lord said, turn around and pray, touch that woman behind her head. He touched her. She turned around. Touch. When he touched her own behind her, she fell forward. But when she fell forward, her body touched the ground, but Jesus catch her, catch her, mm. and took her straight up to heaven. Whoa. And she, he took her to a room, a giant building. She's never seen any building as magnificent as that. And she saw in this room every kind of body part you can imagine. And she says, What is this? I don't see anything. And the Lord says, this is what I'm going to release in the earth. Because if I give somebody a new heart, nobody see it. But I'm going to do things in a way that is so glorious that the world is going to know that I'm God. And I say, okay, remember, there's a place called Journey. You should <laughs> right. Yes, let's go. Yeah. But, but I believe that's what he's, I believe what he's going to do in our midst will be so astounding Right. That will get the attention of nations. Yes. And when they come, what will they see? They will see us humble men of God that love Jesus and serving him. Yeah. No, no kind of pride, no kind of nothing. They would come and they wouldn't say, the journey is a great church. Yes. They would say, the God of journey is great. Yeah. And that is what makes them... Yeah. They're not going to say, man, that guy's a good communicator. That guy's a great, has an incredible gift. They're going to say, man, when I walked in that place, the presence of God was there. And I can yes, see what, yes. and uh, so I went to Times Square Church. Um, this is probably a decade ago now. I remember the feeling, and it's never left me. As soon as I walked in the doors, I just felt the glory of God. I was like, yes, I just yes. wanted to cry. I wanted to weep. Like I was yes, like, yes. I remember like in the, there wasn't anything special about the service. There wasn't anything. But I just sat there, like, just wanting to cry the entire time because the glory of God was just there. And I was like, man, if I ever have an opportunity to be a part of a church like that, I don't really care what role I play in it. I just, I just that's just my heart. I want to, I want to, I want to experience a place where as soon as people park in the parking lot, that's it. They just want to. They're like. Either, either the joy of the Lord comes over them. Maybe some will feel like they want to cry. Maybe yes, some of them yes. will uh, anxiety and depression's broken in the moment. Like, but there's there's just going to be a response that's different for every single person yes. Yes. to the presence of God. And, and I just want people to literally draw drive up on um, to the church and feel the presence of God just like that. Yeah, oh, I would say I desire that, but more of an overwhelming desire that everywhere I go, it's like that. Yep. Like, you well, know, you're care we're all carers of the presence of God. Yeah, right. right. And then, so, you know, I've prayed that prayer for my house, our land, our gym, wherever my kids go. And, um, I think it's that anticipation, like you're walking with God yeah. in this realm and you understand, like, you don't know what's coming next, but you can feel it. You could see it. Yep. And it's an exciting aspect. And when you're there, you never want to leave that part, right? And you get to dream with God, and He, he gives you little nuggets. And um, but you, you, when you were talking about um, that story, man, I, I almost felt like oh, I just want to cry right now because that's that's what's gonna happen. That's what's yeah. gonna happen. Um, and, and my heart breaks because I, I want people to understand that this is real. This is where we are going, yeah. um, and I want them to have what we understand. Um, and so I think that's why we just like from week to week as leaders, like we, we just, we just want God to move and we want them to see in our lives, you know, yeah. um, that it's, it's not just for us, yeah. it's for you. And that's why we say it this way, that we want our corporate encounters with yeah. God to lead to daily personal encounters that's with it. God. So that when people come and they experience the power and glory of God, like, you, let's go. you're just going to want more of it. Like there's, when you really encounter the Lord, like there's, I remember when I was like 15, 16, the reason why I'm, I'm a, I was a worship pastor for 17 years um, was because I just wanted to be with 
the Father. I just wanted yes. to be with His presence. It had nothing to do with a passion for music. Yes. Like I didn't play guitar because <laughs> uh-huh. I, I enjoy the guitar. I play guitar because it was a means for me to worship the Father and yes. to get into His presence. Yeah. And just as a teenager, I was addicted to the presence of God. I just wanted to be with Him. I'd spend hours, two hours in my room. I am where I am today because of times and seasons in my life where I was able to sit and just spend an hour, two hours just with him. Amen. You know, and it's about us building that even now um, into yeah. our lives, right? I think and, uh, what I love is with us is that as we talk about it, it's not coming across to nobody like we're talking about some spooky thing. And you're letting me, <laughs> no, it's, what we're talking about is so real. It it's, is. Yeah. It's, it's not no, you know, super spiritual, funny, you know. It's real about us just experiencing him. Yeah. Yeah. I experienced him at 15. I went to a shop and this man was boasting of, I think I told you that story of fasting to do yoga. And I was walking home and the Lord came to me. I can take it to the spot on the road and said, look at that. An old man like that can fast to serve the devil. And a young man like you cannot fast to serve me. So I ran home and fasted for five days, during which I felt the glory of God all over me for three days. And he showed me the nations of the world, explained but what an apostle he is and everything at 15. So, so when other boys running, doing nonsense, I knew what my destiny was. Yeah. And, uh, and then he said, you're going to... This glory that you that you experience, you will live in it permanently. A mm-hmm. coming a time in your life, and I know that that time is at hand, yeah. and that's what will touch the world. Because yeah. no amount of church can do it. Yeah. No matter how organized <laughs> the church is, no matter how great the singing is, it's going to take the presence of God. Yeah. You know, people. Why did people? F- I was asking him that. Why did the people come and follow you everywhere you go? It was for the glory of God. Yeah. People experienced what they couldn't experience any other place, any other time, yep. but in his presence, and that's yeah. what we, we want. And I must say today, talking with you guys, it's really, I, I can hear, feel your heart, and I'm sure anybody who's watching at us can see deep inside of us that this yeah. is really yeah. genuinely what we desire. This is not some sermon that we made up. This is not right. some teaching we read from a book or no, this is something that we genuinely want. Yeah. Not to preach, not for to, to share with nobody. This is what we want for us. So preaching and sharing is the overflow. That's what he says, my cup is full and running over. What people yeah. see is they're wow. running over of what's on the inside. Yeah. And if I could serve with anybody, it is it is my joy to serve the Lord with you guys, you know. Amen. We love you, yes. and we're so oh, yeah. thankful joy for your leadership you. here. And, I mean, I look at you like a spiritual father. Oh, yeah. You are Absolutely. a spiritual father to me, and I just appreciate how you uh, have poured into me. And, um, man, when you went to I'm just so thankful that you're here. You won, you won me because you related to the people. You just connected with them, and uh, they just consider, it was just wonderful serving together. Yeah. Our vision is to keep, like you, you know, you were talking earlier, is to go to the nations every month somewhere. Yep. And uh, I am trusting him now for the real, you know, I've been working with my son in law and I'm not traveling. I believe that that season in my life is finished. And I want the resources to go to the nations every month. And it could be, and now the doors are open to Bolivia again, Argentina again, and Let's Peru, go. and even Vietnam, you know. And uh, so we want to go to the nations of the earth. Uh, like, you have to be in Kenya, have to be, you know, be South Africa in July. We have a crusade in Cape Town, South Africa. That's amazing. Cape Town, South Africa is the end of the continent. Yep. And you can have all four seasons in one day. <laughs> and um, it, it's, it's, it's a real beautiful place. Then I'll be in Johannesburg and I'll be in the north of South Africa, a place called Limpopo, where Kruger National Park is. Yeah. And then we'll be in Kenya and Uganda and all over. Yeah. But to go to the nations with the word of God, representing journey, of course. Yeah. And because, you know, we do nothing out of order. We have no other agenda but to serve in the house. 
But as I go, I go representing journey and then come back home and serve. Yeah. Right. So if we need to sweep the building or we need to pay and whatever we do, whatever needed to be done in the house, we're here to do it. But yeah. And to go to the nation. So yeah, at this point is believing him for the resources to do that. Yeah. And if God's people are hungry, we must be able to feed them. Yeah. Yes. If they're naked, we must be able to clothe them. Yeah. You know, and and represent the kingdom of God. Yeah. And they do when we do whatever we do for them, they know we're doing it for Jesus. If he was here, he would do it. Yeah. Yes. So I'm just here as his representative, his errand yeah. boy, as it were to serve you. Right. So, you, like you were with me, whatever we preach, we have to have scripture. Because I don't, people ain't coming to hear my opinions or nothing. Yeah. I have to be totally the word of God and the glory of God. Yes. See, so, that that's where we are. Yeah. As I go, I represent the, the ministry, and, and I believe God is going to do such a thing in journey that our ministry here will be a church in Jacksonville for the nations of the world. Yep. So, and it's part of it's part of what's always it sounds like a funny thing to steward. Yeah. You talk when you say stewardship, you think about money. Yes. You think about other things. Uh, stewardship is so important with stewarding the presence of God. God. Yes. We're as we we're not asking we're not warning the presence of God just for a feeling or emotion or anything else. Mm-hmm. We're warning it to change not only our community, in our city, uh, our region, but stewarding it to the nations, right? The nations. And your, your extension of that. I really can do believe it. Can you imagine when people begin to tr- go from journey, we can take teams to the, to the nations. Yeah, it's going to be it. beautiful. What, would, what our worship here would be like in a... In a crusade in South Africa. I mean, you come on, shot. let's find out. <laughs> no, no, not you. See, sometimes people here they just stand up, but the people would be running. They would be, it's, yeah. So sometimes we can take things for granted at home. Yeah. But when you go, and, and you, what we have is so special that God is going to release it. Yeah. He can. It is he has taken time to prepare it and he can sample it to the end of the earth. Right. I believe we're gonna have people coming from all over the world to come and visit the journey. Yep. Ministers are gonna be coming. People as we go to like go to South Africa, when they come to the States to visit to come. Imagine we can have a conference one time where people would come from all these countries just to be in our midst. Yep. That's the whole assignment. Yep. See Lord keep our hearts pure. Oh yeah. Keep our hearts pure. No matter <laughs> what God. happens, no matter where we go, we just want to. We just want to be in His will. That's my, it, right? my thing to keep my heart pure is a covenant. My covenant is not number one. I submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Yeah, right. Right? right. I will never preach my own opinion. Right. Only the revealed Word of God. I will never touch the bride because yep. she belonged to Him. That means I would never do nothing that will take away from the bride. It's like when Eliezer found Rebecca for Isaac. If he had touched her breast or touched her body in any way, it would have been trouble. His assignment was to bring her as a chaste virgin and give her to Isaac. Mm-hmm. So that's what it be by not touching the bride. Yeah. And then I and then I am um, I whatever has been accomplished or is being accomplished or shall be accomplished, I give all the glory to God. So when you make a covenant like that, you set your heart, this is what I'm going to do. Yes. You know, and uh, he does help us to do it. Yep. You know? Amen. This is what the grace of God does. So yep. when you see the guys preaching on TV about grace as though grace is an excuse for wrong, they don't understand. Yeah. Overextending grace. Yeah. Uh, because the grace of God is what taught me as a little boy from Guyana yeah. what is right and what's wrong. Mm. Only the grace of God can do that. Yep. So. It's wonderful. I feel, I feel like there's going to be a message soon that we will begin to speak on just the fear of fear of the Lord yeah. for sure. Right? That's coming. I can feel it in my spirit. But man, we're probably over an hour at this point. Oh, no. We go all I'm day a, with this. I'm, I'm okay with it. We could probably go another hour if we wanted yes. to. But well, we're um, gonna meet again next week. Yeah, oh, we're we're, we'll, again. we'll be back next week. And uh, Bishop, would you mind praying us out? I mean, yeah. but it was just wonderful being together, and it was our joy to share with you what we shared with you. Is where we are now. Yes. This is not something we study. This is not something we prepared for. This is has been from our hearts yes. to you. It's an overflow, yes. yeah. Amen. So, Lord, we just bless you for the great privilege of serving you in our day, our time. 
Your word says that David served his own generation by the will of God. Yeah. And then he fell asleep. We want to serve our generation, yes. young and old, yes. rich and poor, of every race, every background, every country that you would send us to serve our generation yes. with your word and your spirit and your glory. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Whatever you're going to do on this earth, remember journey yes. and do it in our midst. And we vow that we will give you all the praise, yes. all the honor. And all the glory in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Blessings to you, Pastor.